these rails to trail path. This is just one small step in what the Williams Corporation really needs in order to construct its pipeline from the north to the south all across Lebanon County. This is a first strike and it goes against what a lot of citizens want and also the resolutions passed by South London Dairy Township and Anvil Township. Within the boundaries of Levin County at the present, there are already, I'm told, 101 miles of existing corridors, pipelines, that carry gas and other dangerous hazardous liquids. By granting this right of way for a new pipeline to Williams, they have effectively given Williams a green light to go ahead and impact the property rights and the safety of hundreds of landowners in Lebanon County, including many of our farmers. Ultimately, for those unfortunate owners in the path of this pipeline, Williams will attempt to buy easements and failing that may turn to eminent domain. Thus, they gain the right to trespass on private land, to take the land they need to build their underground pipeline, and later access the property to maintain and repair it. More than a year ago, the Williams Corporation presented its massive pipeline construction proposal and called it just a line on a map. But to the people of Lebanon County, this massive pipeline intrusion is far more than just a line on a map. It's a threat to their homes, quality of their lives, and the continued safety of their families. The Democratic Party of Lebanon County cannot idly sit by and let this go unopposed. Thus, we have called together a coalition to express our concerns and mostly to raise public awareness. At the entrance to Mount Gretna camp meeting near where I live, there's a brass plate with a quote attributed to Helen Keller. I am only one, but still I am one. I cannot do everything, but still I can do something. I will not refuse to do something I can do. And we in this issue are not just one, we are many, and we will be heard. As Democrats, we stand up for the people, those whose land may be taken, those whose safety will be threatened, those whose crops and livestock will suffer. We will not keep silent when corporate power takes away the rights of citizens and local municipalities both. So today we bring this to your attention. And with us today are some knowledgeable resources who stand ready to field your questions. We have Joellen Litz with us, a Lebanon County Commissioner, and also involved in the Water, Sotero Watership Association. Commissioner Litz. I'd like to start by thanking Lois for her leadership and um, getting the Democrats to talk about issues. This is fresh and it's sorely needed. It also um, warmed my heart to hear her ask, why did you vote the way you voted? So today I'm going to go into a little more detail about that. And first I'd like to draw your attention to this particular map. This is the holdings for Williams. And if you will notice, they have a pipeline that exists that comes across the state, makes a number seven here at the ocean, and goes down to the Gulf. So what they're proposing is to take a shortcut through central Pennsylvania and then continue on down. That's the big picture. You needed to have that bird's eye view to understand what I'm going to say. As a county commissioner, there are four things that impact us as commissioners that I've been able to come up with. First of all is public safety. Our public safety is extremely important. We run the emergency management agency, and in there is the 911 center, so we dispatch fire, ambulance, and police. If there's an accident, we are on the front lines with the first responders. Another thing is that this pipeline is to skirt the side of Fort Indian Town Gap. By their existence, they are to train our military troops. That means they detonate and explode ordinance and those types of things. If there is a misfire, a ricochet, or whatever, don't want to have a mishap in that 
somehow the pipeline is impacted. It could be just the vibration of the ground causes it to shift slightly and, get, and develop a crack. And after a bit of time, there could be an explosion. So these are the kinds of things that I, I think about a little bit. And of course, we have sinkholes, which again could require us to dispatch people to come out. In addition to that, this pipeline is going to snake under seven bodies of water because it's going to run north through south through Lebanon County. And that means these are the existing east-west pipelines. All the other pipelines that I'm aware of run east-west across the county. So they're going to come down through and snake under these seven bodies of water in all of these existing pipelines before exiting. That's 27 miles through Lebanon County. The entire pipeline that they're proposing to do is 178 miles. Other counties impacted include Cumberland, Northumberland, Schuylkill, and Lancaster. In Lebanon County, Lois mentioned that Anvil and South London Dairy have passed a, a resolution or that they can become interveners so that they preserve their voice and that they are allowed to speak out as this process goes on because it's not over. And to that point, I felt it was very important that London County also have the right to discuss this as we go on. One of those reasons is because London County, through our planning department, speaks for and enforces the zoning ordinances for municipalities. So therefore, I thought it was extremely important that we become an intervener. That motion did pass. So that is preserved. David Warner, our solicitor, was very kind to file that um, with FERC to ask for that we be allowed to be interveners. I think it's also important to point out that Marcellus Shale is just the first layer where they can extract gas. Below that is Utica. And as technology evolves, they're going to be able to drill deeper and deeper. So they're going to pipe more and more gas. Now that's not bad, necessarily. I heat my home with gas. I admit that. I have also have solar and um, a little bit of um, oil. So I believe in a balanced portfolio. However, a lot of this gas that is proposed to go through this pipeline is not going to service Pennsylvania people. It's not even going to necessarily service the United States of America. It will go to foreign countries, is what I'm, my understanding is. So, all of that being said, we talked about public safety in great detail because it warrants a lot of discussion. That's a priority for me. Next is GIS, that stands for Geographic Information Systems. That is an electronic mapping system that the county uses in practically every department that we have these days, including 911 and public safety. Any new pipeline with a new easement is going to have to be plotted with latitude and longitude in great detail, so that if there is an accident, we can dispatch to the proper location. Land preservation. The county, the state, and local municipalities have all invested large sums of dollars, millions of dollars, in preserving farms for many reasons. Because it is a source of our local food, that we don't have to import food, that might have chemicals that are not run through all of our stringent tests. And so therefore it's important. I know we have an organic farmer, and. Uh, but anything in America at least has some scrutiny. Other countries, we have no control over what they use on their products. So therefore, uh, for the food source, it's very important for our, our local farms. And preserving farms is, has been a priority for many generations for, for our different commissioners. In addition, it helps preserve our culture, our heritage, and the productivity. Uh, I mentioned productivity here with the preserved farms because what happens when you uh, dig out a pipeline like this, you take out all the soil and lay it on the side. And if that soil is not put back in the exact same layers that it was taken out, and let's just say, as an example, the topsoil goes on the bottom, the productivity of that soil 
has diminished significantly. That's not good for the farmer, and it's not good for us because it produces less food. And the last area that I'd like to talk about is assessments. This is an area that, that has not been talked about a lot. Looking at these existing pipelines again, those are all on rights of way. They have been what I call vetted. That means when we did our reassessment process, every one of those pipelines on every parcel, east to west, was considered, just like boulders or wetlands or really steep slopes. A pipeline can impact the value of the assessment of the property. And that's not necessarily in a, an upward value, it's more or less a reduction in value because of the fact that you can't build on the pipeline. And let's just say they end up with a 50-foot right-of-way, which I think is what's proposed. If you have a 50-foot right-of-way, unlike a pre-existing condition, this house, for example, is very close to the pipeline. But when you are dealing with a brand new pipeline and a brand new piece of ground that's being developed, and I know we have developments going on in South Anvil, you may have additional setbacks beyond that 50-foot right-of-way. Say it's 50-foot from the pipeline itself, so it could be another 50-foot beyond what has been negotiated for price-wise. I don't know if you're following that or not, but uh, a 50-foot wide pipeline, if you go to both sides, can end up becoming a 100-foot wide where you can't build. Any appeal for an assessment, the onus is put on the property owner. They have to perhaps hire an attorney, perhaps get in a, uh, an appraisal, uh, take off from work, and then there's that stress of, it's not something you do every day. And you come in to be assessed in the appeal board, and you plead your case. And there's lots of factors, but I've already addressed some of those. So that onus of an appeal would be put onto the property owner. And any price that a property owner negotiates may be totally eaten up, negated by future taxes. So they end up really nothing in that. Jeff Steck that came in to us one day, and he has a piece of property in the Cornwall area, and I don't know exactly where. And he pled his case. He wanted to build his retirement home and his in-laws home on the property and subdivide it. And because the pipeline would go through his property, it would become unsubdividable. So that's another thing that can happen. So as we think about this, that means that, wow, oh my goodness, we have something in common with business. I don't care if you're a resident or a conservationist or a business person. We just found some common ground here. Our economy is, could be negatively impacted. So maybe we should be working together and not at odds with each other. Because anybody buying a piece of property, not knowing where they're going, if we don't establish this up front right now, they're always going to have that little fear in the back of their mind, am I going to be next to the next pipeline? Because this is not the only new pipeline that's going to want to come to Lebanon County. And so therefore, this is going to set the precedent. They find out that we know what we're talking about and that we are organized and that we have thoroughly thought this process through. Then indeed, they may go around Lebanon County and avoid us. I don't wish that on people. And again, I use gas. So this is not about an anti-gas program. This is about utilizing existing rights of way to run new pipelines, not taking eminent domain, not taking people's land, not adding additional public safety concerns onto our people. Next, the county cannot spot assess. So we can't go out and say, oh, we're going to be nice guys and we're going to reduce your assessment. Again, the person has to apply to do that. So spot assessment is not allowed. Now, if you think about this whole thing, What's happening is, potentially, and I say potentially, because there's always different factors that can come in, and, and maybe somebody won't get a reduction because there's something we missed, and it goes up here and down here a little bit, and it's neutral in the end. 
those kinds of things can happen. But theoretically, if we have 200 and some properties that are impacted, and every one of those gets just $100 off, that's $2,000 less revenue, for instance. I don't know what it is, but whatever it is, it's less revenue if it's $100 a property for the county. And then you have the school district, and then you have the municipality. Well, we operate on what's called a balanced budget. So if you follow that thought process through, that means somewhere that money's going to have to be made up. It could be a tax increase to everyone. And I don't want to sound like I'm trying to put fear in people, but I'm trying to be practical and think it out loud and get a conversation started so that we can all be on the same page. So in closing, by following existing rights of way, no jobs have to be lost because I hear people say, well, you know, pipelines bring jobs. It's fine. It's really fine. But you can do it on an existing right of way. You don't have to have a brand new pipeline route. So this, so, this is a solution that preserves jobs and does not pit landowners who are in the path of the pipeline against anybody, not the conservationists, not the business people, not each other. I believe this solution to follow the existing rights of way has the potential to avoid impacts to our public safety, our county GIS, preserving top rate soils for farming and sensitive environmental areas, and also retaining our assessment values. What I will do is show you, this is actually a map from Williams, and I can go through here and give you many, many different kinds of um, examples. But if you will look, the yellow lines are the property lines, okay? And this pipeline is going to go right through the center of those properties. Does that make sense to you? What would happen, for instance, if they would run in what is already setback areas where they could not build, it would reduce and the, it would not negatively impact value. So there's, there's things that could be done, even if they did run it, to make it more friendly to the communities they're running through. But I firmly believe they should use their existing rights of way. And that was the premise on which I voted no on the um, commissioner's request to run across the Lebanon Valley Rail Trail because I really felt there was another way and I thought it was a more a better way, a more friendly way for everybody. Thank you for listening. Thank you. Not one person contacted me and indicated that they would like me to take another position on that. So well he didn't doubt so I'll put it. That's not true, Ralph. You did know, obviously. I didn't know. Well, you you knew you knew that there was a pipeline route, and you knew that it was both of them were going to be crossing the rail trails. So. I didn't know about the vote. We really want to stand up for people and businesses uh, who are in the path of these pipelines because there are significant threats, and we just want to make sure people are aware of it. We have a position where about some, it varies because, you know, we're Democrats. But it also is true that not enough people in Lebanon County are paying attention to this. Uh, and now is the time to do that because if we don't do it now, it's going to be over.